Hello, everyone. My name is Alan, and I am one of the pastors at Cottage Hill, and this is my wife, Kathy. Hello. And for the last several years, we've celebrated Advent by asking our members to write devotions as well as our pastors, putting those in book form and even online. This year, we decided to do something different with an Advent podcast. Advent meaning arrival. Christians for 2,000 years have on their Christian calendar Advent, the four weeks leading up to Christmas. Looking forward to the humble birth of the Lord Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ, and then even looking to his arrival in the second coming. So what we'll do in this podcast is there will be the the faith element. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about for you and I as a couple and as a family, maybe some traditions and how we navigated the busyness of the world, our culture today with our Christianity, our faith. And then we'll seek to answer some questions. And so if you have a question for us that you would like to for us to address, you can send us a message. You can add a comment on the podcast online, and we would love to deal with that. Is there a special memory? We have two sons, mm-hmm. Christopher and Connor. They are now grown. They have, they're married. Mm-hmm. They have families of their own. Is there a special memory for you and I or as a family that comes to mind? I go back to when the boys were very little. Um, a matter of fact, I think Connor was just walking good because this memory, he's, he's wobbly. <laughs> he's wobbly. <laughs> I know exactly where yeah. you're going. But we we were living in Jacksonville, and we, you know, had two kids. We didn't have a whole lot of money. Um and we were thinking, what's something special we can do? And we were sitting there, and it was just a spur-of-the-moment thing. We thought, you know, neither of the boys have seen snow. So we didn't quite know where we were going, but we bundled them up and and found some. On Christmas he- on Day. On Christmas Day, yes. Mm-hmm. We had op- gotten up and had our our opening presents and gifts from each other and to each other and, and um bundled up and just got on the road and started driving and we drove and drove and I don't remember exactly where we found a Waffle House to eat at which was the only thing open at that time. We discovered that there are no restaurants open on Christmas Day but But Waffle Waffle House. House. Mm -hmm. Yes so began the Waffle House tradition for the Floyd boys they love Waffle House to this day Um, but so we drove and I don't remember where we're in North Carolina. North Carolina okay. Not far over the state line. Okay and I remember we're we just got off the road, main road, and we got we started started seeing the hills, and we saw snow, little snow. So remnants we started, of snow. <laughs> we started driving to the snow, and we found this, it was almost like picturesque, this little white Baptist, well, Methodist, Methodist church. church right. Mm-hmm. A Methodist church up on the right side, and it had a <laughs> like a baseball or softball field to the side, and it was right. covered in snow. Covered in snow. So we pulled in the parking lot and jumped, got the boys out, and Connor's waddling, falling over, made snow angels, built a snowman, had, had the best Had a snowball time. fight? Oh, you remember that? I do remember the snowball fight. Do you remember? Do you remember the snowball fight? I have because a vague memory because I, I think I was unconscious <laughs> for a portion of it. He there picked, was one particular <laughs> snowball that we didn't realize. We? Was, I didn't realize was a rock covered with snow. And it hit my head. It hit your head, and you you <laughs> wobbled a little bit like <laughs> Connor little bit. was wobbling. Yes, yes. We lived in Florida. <laughs> the boys had never seen snow. Uh, we felt like we was just drive, mm-hmm. so the boys could. And they could remember it to snow. this day, and they, they remember do. they remember the rock too. This hilarious. It's a great memory. It is a great memory for most <laughs> everyone in the family, but you. But it was still great. It was yeah. a great, great experience, and I think it's. Um, making Christmas simple. Mm-hmm. We live in a, a time, and even for us today, it becomes more and more difficult with this consumerism. We almost have to remind ourselves each year, let's let's make it, let's keep it, keep it simple. I want us to think today about, about God and about God doing the impossible. Mm-hmm. Our, our scripture focus this week is, is Mary finding out that she is the chosen one and will have the Lord Jesus. She is still a very young person. She's a virgin, and yet she's going to have a child, not just a child, but the Mm -hmm. child. The message in all of that is 
nothing is too hard. Nothing is impossible with God. Can you think, we've, we've celebrated a great memory. Is there a time that you think of, Kathy, in our life or your life, our life together or as a family, that it seemed impossible, but God came through? I know you and I could tell lots of stories, especially early on in our marriage, that we, we, we couldn't even pay our bills, mm -hmm. and God provided. Mm -hmm. But what about later later on? I would say the Christmas um, that my mom and dad were with us. My mom was diagnosed with cancer in August of uh, 2004, and it was very unexpected. She had been sick, but we didn't realize that was going to be it, um, and given just a very short time to live. And so uh, our sons, Christopher and Connor, were the only grandsons, and so she wanted to be with with them and spend as much time as she could so we very carefully moved her to Jacksonville with us they moved in with us and spent those last days with us and so you know Thanksgiving and Christmas as it approached it became you know she became very very sick yeah. um and it was very very hard and you're going through this season of that's supposed to be merry and bright but yet there's so much sorrow and sadness and anger and even you know grief coming in and uh just trying to figure out how do i make this season special for the boys yeah. and special for them knowing it's the last yeah. christmas together right. and you know for a, a while there I, that was and the it. tearing of emotions yes it's, it's just it was a little bit of everything and so you know in my mind i was just getting deeper and deeper and heavier heavier hearted you know focusing on this is last Christmas, this is last Christmas. And then as I began praying, Lord, help me help me navigate through this in a way that honors you, but yet the, my boys can see you at work in all of this. And, um, you know, so many different times throughout that, but, you know, particularly Christmas Day, as we get up that morning, I'm like, Lord. It's an impossible situation it's an, I, I don't of know joy, how this is, sorrow, right. how do, sadness, how, grieving, I need you to Enjoy, do this. Right. There's no other yeah. way. I, you know, help help me through this. And I can say that there was a peace that day, in the midst of all the pain. I, I chose that morning. You know what? I'm going to focus on the whole. Re Jesus is the whole purpose of is is Christmas. What a gift that is. That he he was a gift of salvation, and because of salvation and resurrection, we have eternal life. And this is not it. Um, this is the last Christmas here on earth, but this, you know, there's so much more to come, and I'm going to focus on the joy in that. There's peace in that, and, and make this, this is going to be a special day. I focused on him and the moments that I could have with my parents and our boys all together as a family, rather than focusing on the sorrow, and I think too often people focus on their sadness and sorrow. It's a choice. Lord, he was, you know, he gave, he gifted me that and I'm so thankful that I you know we went through that day and had a very special day yeah. and I can say I don't think years down the road if you ask the boys they wouldn't say oh yeah I remember Nana's last Christmas with no I they it was, it was a it was special a, it was a special Christmas it was a beautiful Christmas I love that you kept using the word choice you made a you made a choice mm -hmm. I think for so many people today, Christmas, we think of Christmas as the greatest time of joy and happiness and laughter, when for many people, it is the opposite of that. They are grieving the, the impending loss or the recent loss of a loved one or loss of a job or they're alone. There's a multitude of reasons of why people dread Christmas. It's a time of sadness. Mm -hmm. I love that you use the word choice because as Christians, as believers, we do have a choice every day. That's right. We have a choice. Are we going to believe even in a somewhat impossible situation? Do we choose to believe God? Mm -hmm. I think it's really a question of this. Uh, where is my hope mm -hmm. and what do I believe? Mm -hmm. Do I believe in the God who can intervene in time and space and history and God can become a man in the person of Jesus. Can Do we believe that all things are possible with God? So what do I believe? And where is my hope? And I also loved that you said that it's about family. My hope is in Christ. It, my hope is in heaven. But also it is family. Mm -hmm. 
Christmas is not about the consumerism of it. How many presents? How much did we spend? We get so caught up in that when we talked about Christmas finding snow. Mm -hmm. It was just me, you, the boys in the car looking for snow. Mm -hmm. Living in Florida where there is no snow ever, we're going to go find snow. It was this great family moment. Mm -hmm. What I remember about that Christmas day is that your mom had been so sick up to that point, she was actually stronger that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I also remember us just sitting around that room. I don't remember one present that was given. I remember Mm -hmm. the image of family. Together. Together. Okay, we have a question that's been submitted. And the question is, how do I best navigate those impossible family conflicts during the holiday season? So you think about newlyweds, Mm -hmm. you think about blended families, you think about having to go visit someone's house for Thanksgiving, and then maybe someone's house for Christmas or Christmas Day we do this. And and, and generally, when you're inviting extended family or outside family, it can be a source of conflict. We, we know about that. Mm-hmm. Um, what, would you, what would your recommendation be to someone who is facing that? I would say, first, as a married person, you need to have a conversation with your spouse and make sure you're on the same page, have the same goals, have the same desires, um, and, and set those boundaries about where we're going to go when, how long we're going to be there, and then what. And then you have to share those decisions with the extended family. And then I remember when the boys were little, you know, or when we first got married, we both grew up in close families from the same hometown. So, you know, we had to navigate how much time here, how much time there. And it can, it can, be, it can be difficult. Um, trying to find that balance, and we did that for years until we morphed into, after we had our kids, our own traditions, where, right. you know what, here's where the boundaries are going to be, yeah. that we're going to create our own traditions, and then figure out the the other details. But Yeah, I think there's several things that you brought up that I think are important to maybe expand just a little bit. One is that there needs to be conversations had early on. Right. We, we actually, in our premarital counseling, we encourage this. We actually said to both of our boys before they were married, hey, and to, and to their, their fiancés, we said to them as a couple, you need to decide early on what your, what your schedule is going to be for the holidays. <laughs> right. you know, and we also emphasize that much of it has to be with us, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but but they, we told them that we would give them freedom. They needed to work that exactly, out. Exactly, right. And, and it is easier before children come. But right. those conversations have to take place. And what we did was when we began having children, then we did create our own, mm-hmm. we called them family traditions. Right, right. And I think that's important. Mm-hmm. So I think, first of all, having those conversations, making sure everyone is on the same page, then communicating that mm-hmm. to others, mm-hmm. be, having each other's back right. when those conversations are, are had. <laughs> right. And then I think the other thing that you said that I think is so crucial is setting boundaries, mm-hmm. setting boundaries, um, and making sure that in those boundaries, we protect each other. We protect us. Right. The marriage is the number one. Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's, it's the number one unit. Mm-hmm. We made a covenant. We stood before God and made a covenant before God to one another. Mm-hmm. Then when we have children, I mean, this is the number one. Mm-hmm. So we protect that above everything else. If there are extended family members and even unrealistic expectations, mm-hmm. we have to come together in that. Mm-hmm. But I think it's very healthy to set boundaries absolutely, and to say, we're not going to come this year or we're, we're going to come by. And if they ask, you have to be honest. Mm-hmm. This is not healthy for us. Right. And, you know, and, and I think we did, a, it was difficult, difficult seasons, but I think we displayed that well for our boys. And I think even seeing that today is that because especially being in ministry, you have so many other angles pulling on you as well so to protect this as a as a, a married couple it can can be difficult with all the think places that you have to be but our boys also saw that that they knew we were protecting our family and that there were things this was this 
center unit was important. And I think I see them now displaying that in their own families. The setting of boundaries is to protect the family. Right. But it's also to go back what we referenced earlier. Christmas is meant to be simple. Right. Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus in the manger, shepherds. And then, you know, mm-hmm. later came the, the wise men. <laughs> right. But it's to keep it simple. So right. the struggle today in, in our counseling ministry is because of blended families, multiple family units, it becomes so complicated. I was talking to with a family recently. They were having to make multiple trips Mm -hmm. on Christmas Day to make sure they visited everyone. Right. And, I mean, of course, they created this thing that is now an impossible task. Right. And they're exhausted. And they don't look forward to Christmas. They're not enjoying Christmas. So it may be you have to have a time out. You have to say, you know what? We're reinventing Christmas this year. Mm-hmm. And we we made a decision as a family or as a couple that we have to keep it simple. So we'll see you before Christmas. We'll see you after Christmas. We'll see you every other Christmas. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. the beauty of technology now with FaceTiming and right, all of those right. things is that I would just strongly encourage those things. Have the discussions early, Mm -hmm. give clarification, Mm -hmm. be in agreement, protect each other, set boundaries. Keep it simple. Simple Christmas. Good stuff. Yes. So I would like for the major takeaway today would be that if you find yourself in in an impossible situation, There is no way. Know that, number one, God can make a way. He specializes in making the impossible possible. We have choices to make of do we believe, Mm -hmm. do we trust. I think our focal passage with that in mind is Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse number 26, when the angel came and told Mary of the impossible situation that was about to become possible. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren for nothing is impossible with God and Mary said behold I am the servant of the Lord and let it be to me according to your word and the angel departed from her so in your impossible situation know that all things are possible and like Mary we choose even in our doubt choose to trust. Thank you for joining us today on this Advent podcast, and you can find more resources celebrating Advent and this Christmas season as a family at cottagehill.org slash Christmas.